President Kennedy was assassinated on November 22, 1963. On December 1st, at a Nation of Islam rally in New York, Malcolm said that, quote, the chickens have come home to roost, unquote, meaning that the whites had created a climate of hate and got repaid for it. This was against the orders of Elijah Muhammad, who specifically told Malcolm not to comment on the assassination. People got disturbed at Malcolm's comment and Elijah suspended Malcolm for 90 days. This statement from Messenger Elijah Muhammad, the leader of the Muslims of America. Uh, Minister Malcolm Shabazz is addressing a public meeting at Manhattan Center in New York City on Sunday, December 3rd. Did not speak for the Muslims when he made comments on the death of the president, John F. Kennedy. He was speaking for himself and not Muslims in general. And Minister Malcolm has been suspended from public speaking for the time being. Uh, Mr. Muhammad's correct statement on hearing of the death of the president was as follows. We with the world are very shocked at the assassination of our president. And the nation still mourns the loss of our president. And he has said that it seems that every president who speaks out on behalf of the Negro has been assassinated from Lincoln to President Kennedy. This is the December 20th, 1963 issue of Muhammad Speaks, published every two weeks in Chicago. On page three, this item appeared. It's a report that Elijah Muhammad, from his home in Phoenix, telephoned the newspaper ordering that a statement be placed on page one. The report goes on to say that the paper had already gone to press and that the statement could not be published until two weeks later in the next edition. The statement reads, we with the world are very shocked at the assassination of our president. Meanwhile, a widely publicized statement about the assassination had been made by Malcolm X, then chief public spokesman for the Muslims. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad responded by suspending Malcolm and publishing this statement. When Minister Malcolm addressed the public and mentioned the president's death, he did not speak for Muslims. He was speaking for himself and not for Muslims in general. He has been suspended from public speaking for the time being. The nation still mourns the loss of our president. Malcolm's statement was that the assassination was a case of the chickens coming home to roost. Malcolm has since left the Muslim organization and has established his own organization in Harlem. Malcolm uh, uh, actually uh, was discovered long before he was suspended. I only suspended for a time. I only tried him because I knew that he was not going to accept it. And I said, just keep quiet for 90 days. And he would not do it. And I knew he would not do it because he felt that he would be losing his prestige. Malcolm has claimed that many of your followers have left and chosen to follow him and his organization. That's no truth at all. Malcolm has left, all, uh, <coughs> left his own uh, organization and teaching. Uh, and uh, in fact about it, we don't see where that we have missed any of our followers by Malcolm deviation. He, in fact about it, uh, has increased our followers. We uh, have more followers today than we had when Malcolm was with us. And we have more unity than we had when Malcolm was with us. Well, I would say generally throughout the country, because of the pronouncements of some of their leaders, it's a matter that we are watching uh, for any uh, uh, violation of the law, uh, of the federal law. Uh, it's a matter that is uh, uh, being watched at the present time by the Department of Justice. The FBI were watching Malcolm wherever he went. They even bugged his phones. Malcolm returned the favor on February 4th 1964 when two FBI agents paid him a visit at his house and tried to bribe him for information on the Nation of Islam. Malcolm had a tape recorder on his couch and taped the whole conversation. This is probably what you assumed we, we came for to obtain any information you want to give us about the Muslim. Uh, I don't assume anything. No. <laughs> That's a very general statement on my part, but uh, as you know, uh, follow the activities of the Muslims as best we can. But we're always looking for new avenues of information and who better 
than uh, you know than the heads of the Muslims. Uh, at least up to a, a month ago or something like that. We're running uh, under suspension status. Uh, no one knows but Mr. Muhammad. You have to ask him. We're still in the, in the status of the now. Uh, I mean, you're, you're, not not, you're not working now or teaching now at all. Uh, well, I'm still under the suspension. That's what I'm That's a temporary thing, as far as we know. That's, he's, he's, the, he's the only one who can give out any information on yeah. I wouldn't, I couldn't say anything beyond what he could say. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think he has said that uh, it's a temporary suspension. Uh, one of the, I'll, I'll be frank with you, one of the, one of the reasons we picked this, we picked this particular time to uh, contact is because of this suspension. The suspension was brought about by my own doing. Yeah, exactly. But uh, who knows what was in your mind when you did receive the suspension? In other words, bitterness could have entered into it. It would not be illogical for someone to have spent so many years doing something that be than be suspended. No, it should make him stronger because it makes yeah. him realize that uh, uh, law applies to the law enforcer as well as those who are under the enforcement of the enforcer. Well, you've taken nearly a perfect attitude uh, toward the thing, which uh, is uh, almost uh, unhuman, really. Uh, I mean, you've, you've taken the attitude that uh, Mr. Muhammad wants everyone to take if he chastises them. And, which is fine. I mean, <laughs> more power to you. But you see from our viewpoint that there is uh, at least a chance, and this has happened with other members of the organization, they're suspended for some reason or other. And we talk to them, and they uh, stand people up to, you know, and they're, of course, cooperative. Why? Because they're better. Uh, now, assuming uh, you resume your duties, uh, we would be, as you sure know, interested in having you help us out. Help you out to do what? We, we're always helping out the government. We're cleaning, cleaning up all of the uh, <laughs> crime. <laughs> that, uh, fine, fine, fine. We, we, we help it out more than it helps itself. We're at least able to reform the people who have been made criminals by this society, right. by the corruption of this society. And any way to help it out other than that, I wouldn't even know how to begin. Well, what we're interested in, uh, basically, are the people who belong, the names, the members. My telephone number is OL16320. Uh, uh, oh, okay. OL. One six three two zero. Now, by this, by this suggestion, that's I like telling you the sun shines in the east from the east. Well, no comment. <laughs> and uh, the teachings, the uh, plans, the programs. Uh, no teaching is more public than ours, <laughs> and I don't think you find anybody more blunt in stating it publicly than we do. No, exactly. I, I don't think you can go anywhere on this earth and find anybody who expresses their views on matters more candidly than we do. Uh, I can only agree with you. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're right. You do. That, the main thing is uh, there is a certain area of responsibility. This is getting into our uh, angle of it. What we really want is are the names of all those who belong, the names, uh, who they are, the identification. I don't even know them. Uh, you have, do you keep no records? I'm not, it's not my job. I'm just a preacher. Yeah, but somebody out there keeps the record. I don't know who. I don't have any knowledge of those kinds of things. With all the other responsibilities I've had, it's, it's difficult for me to worry about names. Plus, yeah. you would insult my intelligence. Asking me for them. You, you, I mean, in fact, no, you would insult your own because uh, it would mean that your own intelligence isn't heavy enough to weigh me and know in advance what I'm going to say when you ask that question. Well, without getting into the 
Ginsburg. Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. There's a lot of things that are going on in the brain. and hung around as Clay trained for his heavyweight fight with Sonny Liston. Yeah, I've had 180 amateur fights, world Olympic gold medal winning in Rome, Italy, two-time United States Golden Glove champion, two-time United States AAU champion, Pan American champion, Diamond Bell champion, uh, a world stock and ranking heavyweight, and I'm as pretty as you and you're not a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> so when the gong rings and the referee sings out, the winner, and Sonny Liston will fall, Cassius Clay will be the noblest Roman of them all. Clay was an eight-to-one underdog, but beat Liston and became the new heavyweight champion of the world. After the fight, Clay announced to the world that he had converted to the Nation of Islam and he changed his name to Muhammad Ali. Malcolm was asked about his relationship with Cassius. Malcolm X, may I call you that? Certainly. Malcolm X, I, uh, I want to talk with you briefly about your affiliation with Cassius. How long have you known him? About three years. And have you been advising him uh, as far as his religious affiliations are concerned? Well, no, I don't give advice to anyone. He's my brother and my friend. I express what I know and understand around him, and then, but he has a mind of his own and understanding of his own. Did he feel that, uh, he tells me that he felt that his affiliation with the Muslim religion had a great deal to, to do with his winning. Yes, uh, as a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the religion of Islam, it definitely had, uh, had everything to do with his victory. It gave him the confidence that uh, was necessary to be the winner. 
Malcolm X, you were involved in a controversy some months ago with your leader. Is, is that over? Well, I've been, I've been silent for the past 90 days because of uh, some statements I made concerning the President of the United States, uh, which were distorted. They were distorted? And, and yes. And, what did you and, say, and, Malcolm? Well, I said the same thing that everybody says, that uh, his assassination was the result of the climate of hate. But only, I, only, only I said the chickens came home to roost, and, which means the same thing. Uh, uh, climate of hate means that this is, this is the result of something. And when I said chickens coming home the roof, I mean, uh, chickens coming home the roof, I said the same thing. But did you did you did not say that you were glad the president was killed? No, that's what the press said. Uh -huh. What will I look like saying that I'm glad the president was killed? This is your first public statement in that 90-day period, is it not? First time I opened up my mouth in 90 days. That's why I'm talking so fast and so hearty. <laughs> <laughs> you, feel, uh, you feel, however, that uh, that we're making progress in, in this country? No, no, like? no, no. Uh, I will never say that progress is being made. If you stick a knife in my back nine inches and pull it out six inches, there's no progress. Mm -hmm. If you pull it all the way out, that's not progress. The progress is healing the wound that the blow, that the blow made. And they haven't even begun to pull a knife out, much less try and pull, uh, heal the wound. You have, have you have they no won't even admit the knife is there. Do <laughs> you have any <laughs> prediction you'd like to make? No. no when we'll solve this? Cassius makes all the predictions. In the 90 days that I've been silent, I have come to the conclusion that uh, I can best help spread the solution that the, and the diagnosis that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gives of the so-called Negro problem in this country by continuing to remain out of the nation of Islam and working on my own without restriction in the way that I think I best know how. In March of 1964, Malcolm formed his own organization, Muslim Mosque Incorporated. And in April of 1964, Malcolm went to Africa. Malcolm, what is your purpose here? Well, my purpose here is to remind the uh, African heads of the state that there are 22 million of us in America who are also of African descent. And to remind them also that we are the victims of uh, America's colonialism or American imperialism. And that our problem is not an American problem, it's a human problem. It's not a Negro problem, it's a problem of humanity. It's not a problem of civil rights, but a problem of human rights. And what do you hope for from this conference? Well, we hope to uh, bring pressure upon them, or rather we hope to impress upon them the importance of their bringing pressure and world opinion upon the United States to take some meaningful effort to solve our problem in America. We want them to help us get our problem before the United Nations and charge America with violating our human rights in the same way that South Africa is charged with violating the human rights of our people in that area. And what uh, sort of reaction have you been getting from the African leaders? Well, I've gotten a good reaction, a very sympathetic reaction, and an understanding reaction. Many of them have been misinformed by the American government into thinking that uh, black people in America don't identify with Africa, and therefore they've restrained themselves from voicing uh, their interest in our problem. But I've, I've impressed upon them that our problem is their problem, as well as their problems are our problem. And then to Egypt. After his pilgrimage to Mecca, he wrote a letter stating that many white people he met displayed a spirit of unity and brotherhood that provided him with a new positive insight into race relations. Uh, when I was in on the pilgrimage, I had close contact with Muslims whose skin would in America be classified as white and with Muslims who would themselves would be classified as white in America. But these particular Muslims didn't call themselves white. They looked upon themselves as human beings, as part of the human family, and therefore they looked upon all other segments of the human family as part of that same family. Well, now, uh, they had a different look or a different air or a different attitude than that which is uh, reflected in the uh, attitudes of the man in America who calls himself white. So I said that if uh, Islam had done, this, done that for them, Perhaps if the white man in America would study Islam, perhaps they could do the same thing for him. In Islam, he now feels lies the power to overcome racial antagonism and to obliterate it from the heart of white America. I'm going to use to prove that you can uh, use new legislation and change the conditions that our people face in the South. So instead of legislation, in my opinion, it takes education. The whites have to be re-educated. Uh, so that the racism that they have in their heart can be eliminated and, the, and our people have to be re-educated uh, so that we will know how to do something for ourselves instead of waiting for others to do it for us all the time. Well, how will that re-education be brought about? 
Uh, well, just as uh, uh, in the in World War II, this country could use its uh, news media to propagandize and make out, make the whole American public uh, love the love the Germans and the Japanese, rather love the Russians and the Chinese and hate the Germans and the Japanese. And then after the war, they changed it and made the American public love the uh, the Germans and love the Japanese, hate the Russians and hate the Chinese which shows that they can make the American public love whom they will and hate whom they will. And that same process can be used to re-educate the American public and show white people how to love black people and show black people how to do something to stand on our own feet and solve our own problems. The black man doesn't have to be taught to love the white man. The white man has to be taught to love the black man. Or at least, do you think the Civil Rights Bill, uh, when it's passed, uh, is a sign of better times for Negroes in this country? No. Uh, as I said before, the legislation won't solve our problem. New York City has all of the laws. It has FEPC. And still there's job discrimination in this city. Uh, laws doesn't solve, that, that, law, that type of law hasn't solved the problem. Uh, and it's the same with education. It actually, t it's, the same, it's the same with the segregated educational system. Uh, it's, it, it exists here the same as it exists in the South. Now the law here is on the side of an integrated school system, but you still don't have an integrated school system. What do you think of Senator Goldwater's stand on the Civil Rights Bill? Well, he's probably being more honest than uh, the other politicians are. He's, even though uh, his stand is the wrong stand, and, and it's uh, an unjust stand, still he's being more honest than the other white politicians are. I don't think that uh, in, in his heart, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson's stand is any different from Goldwater's stand. Lyndon B. Johnson is taking a stand that is for political expediency. And it's the same with all of the so-called liberal element. It's political expediency, politics. This change of heart divides Malcolm further from the nation of Islam in America as they continue to preach about the white man being the devil and stopping the American Negro from advancing in society. He says there are probably less than 7,000 members now in the Muslim. Well, it has uh, fallen apart. No, thank you. It has fallen apart. And dissatisfied black Americans are now free to participate into the full swing of the struggle that's going on in this country. And I think it will be inclined to step up the tempo. Are they in your movement? Sure. Every movement. <laughs> you have to read the history of slavery to understand this. There were two kinds of Negroes. There was that old house Negro and the field Negro. All the life are. And the house Negro always looked out for his master. When the field Negro got too much out of line, he held them back in check. He put them back on the plantation. Talked to the slaves. They didn't kill them. They sent some old house Negro along behind him to undo what he said. Because he, because he lived better than the field Negro. He ate better, he dressed better, and he lived in a better house. He lived right up next to his master in the attic or the basement. He ate the same food his master ate and wore his same clothes. And he could talk just like his master. master. Good diction. And he loved his master more than his master loved himself. That's why he didn't want his master hurt. If the master got sick, he'd say, what's the matter, boss? We sick? <laughs> when the master's house caught a fire, he'd try and put the fire out. He didn't want his master's house burned. He never wanted his master's property threatened. And he was more defensive of it than the master was. That was the house Negro. But then you had some field Negroes who lived in huts, had nothing to lose. They wore the worst kind of clothes. They ate the worst food. And they caught hell. They felt the sting of the lash. They hated their master. Oh, yes, they did. If the master got sick, they prayed that the master died. <laughs> if the master's house caught fire, they prayed for a strong wind to come along. <laughs> this was the difference between the two. And today you still have house Negroes and field Negroes. <laughs> I'm a field Negro. If I can't live in the house as a human being, I'm praying for a wind to come along. If the master won't treat me right and he's sick, I'll tell the doctor to go in the other direction. <laughs> but if all of us are going to live as human beings, as brothers, then I'm for a society of human beings that can practice brotherhood. To investigate criminal organizations such as the Klan, 
Didn't you and I are within our right to wire Secretary General Ustam of the United Nations and charge the federal government in this country behind Lyndon B. Johnson with being derelict in its duty to protect the human rights of 22 million black people in this country. And in, and in their failure to protect our human rights, they are violating the United Nations Charter, and they are not qualified to continue to sit in that international body and talk about what human rights should be done in other countries on this earth. But before I sit down, I want to thank you for listening to me. I hope I haven't put anybody on the spot. I'm not intending to try and stir you up and make you do something that you wouldn't have done anyway. <laughs> I pray that God will bless you in everything that you do. I pray that you will grow intellectually so that you can understand the problems of the world and where you fit into in that world picture. And I pray that all the fear that has ever been in your heart will be taken out. And when you look, when you look at that man, if you know he's nothing but a coward, you won't fear him. If he wasn't a coward, he wouldn't gang up on him. He wouldn't need to On June 7, 1964, Malcolm sponsors a rally at the Audubon Ballroom in Harlem, and in answer to a question from the audience, Malcolm stated that Elijah Muhammad is the father of six illegitimate children from his teenage secretaries. On June 15, 1964, Malcolm attended an eviction trial because Elijah was trying to get Malcolm and his family out of the house owned by the Nation of Islam. Again. He stated the fact of the illegitimate children fathered by Elijah Muhammad. Uh, it has been a uh, well-known fact, uh, though only in the form of rumor, that uh, there has been a great deal of uh, apprehension at my being out of the black Muslim movement on the part of the black Muslims themselves. And I had uh, stated in a newspaper article about an effort to take my life back in January, and at that time the Muslims denied it. In fact, they tried to make it appear to my brother that I was in Spain. But on a program in Chicago called Hotline, that's moder moderated by Wesley South, John Ali, the national secretary, admitted, uh, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, one of these days last week, that they absolutely were going to kill me. Why are they threatening your life? Well, uh, Primarily because they're afraid that I will tell the real reason that they've been that I'm out of the black Muslim movement, which I never told. I kept to myself. But the real real reason is that Elijah Muhammad, the head of the movement, is the father of eight children by six different teenage girls, different uh, six different teenage girls who were his private personal secretary. Uh, four of them had one child apiece by him. Uh, two of them had two children, and one of those two is pregnant right now in Los Angeles uh, with their his th uh, third child. And uh, this, uh, the one who first made me aware of this was Wallace Muhammad, Mr. Muhammad's son. And it was uh, their fear that uh, if I remained in the black Muslim movement, and this came into the knowledge of his followers, that they would leave him and follow me. So uh, a, a plan immediately was set in motion to uh, take me down, put me out, and uh, the statement that I allegedly made, or not that I allegedly made, I didn't make it, the statement that I made about Kennedy was used as a, a pretext to take me down. But in reality, it was, the, it was because I had come to New York and told Joseph, the captain in New York, and uh, the secretary and the minister in Boston about these children that Mr. Muhammad had. And it was that, that right there was the real reason for my being out of the movement. Did you what get out of the will you take to protect yourself from this threat? I take no steps. I have a rifle. If anybody comes to my house without a good reason, I, I intend to try and use it. Uh, and that's all. On February 14, 1965, Malcolm's house was firebombed. Neither Malcolm, his wife, or children were injured in the blast. On February 21, 1965, Malcolm was to speak at the Audubon Ballroom. He requested police protection, but the police refused and only had police on the outside of the building. The FBI, the CIA, the police, 
and Elijah Muhammad all wanted Malcolm eliminated. Is your life in danger from the Muslims and Elijah Muhammad's group? Well, Elijah Muhammad uh, has given the order to his followers to see that I am crippled or killed. I was sitting in the first row when Malcolm came out. Uh, the stat had been turned over to him by uh, the introductory speaker, and he raised his hand in uh, the Muslim greeting, Salam Alaikum, like this, his right hand. At that point, uh, rumbling broke out behind us, and everybody in the place naturally turned around to look. You understand that the situation was tense because of the bombing of Malcolm's house and so forth. And uh, everybody jumped up to look, and of course, I remember a chair was, had been knocked over back there, and uh, I saw two guys like looking at the floor. And then my next impression was I, I, I turned around to look at Malcolm, and I remember him saying, stay calm, stay cool, and I remember hearing over my right shoulder the, the gunfire. And uh, then Malcolm's hand was up like that, uh, in, still in the greeting, and still uh, exhorting everybody to stay calm when he fell backwards in a dead faint. He just slumped. We have two suspects in custody now. Well, where were they arrested? Who fired the shot? I wouldn't know that at this time. <laughs> where were they arrested, sir? One of uh, these men uh, was arrested uh, on the street by one of our patrolmen close by. There were no police at this meeting, were there, Inspector? There were no uniformed policemen assigned inside this hall. What about the skirmish that apparently took place before? What has that got to do with the apparent killing? It might have been a diversionary tactic. What about the organization? What about the organization, Sister Betty? Do you, do you feel it? It was that Malcolm had set it up well enough for it to carry on. Will they have a counselor who will take his place? Do you have any idea now? Well, at present, I'd rather not make any comments about the organization or Muslim Mosque Incorporated. I know it's a little personal, but you have the children to to consider now. Yes. What, what do you? What can you see for it now? Any, any plans at this time? Now, may I just some... interrupt you to say that? Yes, she has children now. She has four. Yes. The interesting thing is that she is now in the first month of a new pregnancy yes. as well. And I think you ought to know also that striking back to the question of the bombing of his house, yes. he not only was without insurance, but without any money at all. And they tried to say that he was getting money from uh, China and places of that sort, which yes. was ridiculous. What are your plans then for the, for the future? It's rather ironic that you had planned to meet with him this coming Friday, have you, Mr. Sutton? Malcolm was to make a will this Friday. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very much, Mrs. Thank Shabazz. You. Thank you. Thomas Hagen was arrested outside the ballroom and charged with murder. We had, uh, had not, as I say, never resorted to no such thing as violence. The uh, way I see it, uh, Malcolm uh, is the victim of his own preaching. He preached violence, and so he became the victim of it. Would you say flatly that no black Muslims were involved in the shooting of Malcolm X? I wasn't there, but I don't believe that any of my followers were there. It had nothing to do with it at all. Because we don't even know this person. Who do you think uh, might have done it, and who would have had reason? I don't know. I have no knowledge of it. Are you in fear of your own life? No, sir. On February 26, Norman 3X Butler was arrested and charged with Malcolm's murder, and Thomas 15X Johnson was arrested seven days later and also charged with murder. On March 11, 1966, Hare, Butler, and Johnson were convicted of murder in the first degree, and on April 14, 1966, all three were sentenced to life imprisonment. The way that I got involved, involved in the case, as I said earlier, was because of the conflict between Malcolm and Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And um, there were certain statements that Malcolm had made in regards to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Accusations uh, that uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had uh, fathered children by other women, things like this here. Um, a lot of uh, other statements that was being made, and most of the Muslims at the time, actually felt that uh, Malcolm was slandering the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that uh, he was defaming him, that he was lying. That morning, I would say really uh, 
the, the night before, me and uh, the other individuals that I mentioned, um, we had decided that uh, we was going to um, move on now. We were going to um, kill him if we possibly could uh, on the 21st. And uh, we drew up a strategy. How we was going to uh, go into the building, where we was going to sit, and uh, what we was going to do. And um, knowing that there would be a crowd there, we figured that uh, it was possible that we could do it. That's what we did. On May 29, 1980, Congressman W. Hughes of New Jersey writes FBI Director Webster and asks that he look into the assassination of Malcolm X. On June 20th, 1980, Assistant Director Revell writes to Hughes to explain that the FBI has no new information. The FBI files on Malcolm X remain closed today. Ossie Davis delivered the eulogy at Malcolm's funeral. His poetry spoke for millions. Here, at this final hour, in this quiet place, Harlem has come to bid farewell to one of its brightest hopes. Extinguished now and gone from us forever. For Harlem is where he worked and where he struggled and fought. There are those who will consider it their duty as friends of the Negro people to tell us to revile him, to flee even from the presence of his memory, to save ourselves by writing him out of the history of our turbulent times. Many will ask what Harlem finds to honor in this stormy, controversial, and bold young captain, and we will smile. Many will say, turn away, away from this man, for he is not a man, but a demon, a monster, and an enemy of the black man, and we will smile. They will say that he is of hate, a fanatic, a racist, who can only bring evil to the cause for which he struggles. And we will answer and say unto them, did you ever talk to Brother Malcolm? Did you ever touch him? Or have him smile at you? Did you ever really listen to him? Did he ever do a mean thing? Was he ever himself associated with violence or any public disturbance? For if you did, you would know him. And if you knew him, you would know why we must honor him. Malcolm was our manhood, our living black manhood. This was his meaning to his people. And in honoring him, we honor the best in ourselves. However much we differed with him or even with each other about him as his value as a man, that his going from us serve only to bring us together now. Consigning these mortal remains to earth the common mother of all, securing the knowledge that what we place in the ground is no more now a man, but a seed, which after the winter of our discontent will come forth again to meet us, and we shall know him then for what he was and is, a prince, our own black shining prince, who did not hesitate to die, because he loved us so much. Who are you? You don't know. Don't tell me Negro. That's nothing. What were you before the white man named you a Negro? And where were you? And what did you have? What was yours? What language did you speak then? What was your name? It couldn't have been Smith or Jones or Bunch or Powell. That wasn't your name. They don't have those kind of names where you and I came from. No, what was your name? And why don't you now know what your name was then? Where did it go? Where did you lose it? Who took it? And how did he take it? What tongue did you speak? How did the man take your tongue? Where is your history? How did the man wipe out your history? How did the man, what did the man do to make you as dumb as you are right now? If you can't do for yourself what the white man is doing for himself, don't say you're equal with the white man. If you can't set up a factory like he sets up a factory, don't talk that old equality talk.
Do you consider yourself militant? <laughs> I consider myself Malcolm. 